YouTube. I am Merle Grey and welcome back for a new episode of T-Series. This show will take you from the great steppes of Central Asia to the great tea fields of Nanjing. But for today, we will return to lands closer to home as I unravel today's Mug of the Week. Mug of the Week! Oh yes, we are in for a treat. For today's mug is a good old mug of Yorkshire tea. The story starts in the early 5th century when Constantine the Great was crowned Emperor of Yorkshire, shown here in the form of a statue, either holding a sword face down or looking like he's very casually flying an aeroplane. Thus formed the beginning of the Yorkshire regional identity and therefore also dreams of having a variety of tea to call its own. Yorkshire Tea is a black tea blend produced by the Betty's and Taylors group, introduced into the market in 1886 by Charles Edward Taylor. I could not find a picture of a man, so I just put up a picture of James McAvoy, because that's what I imagine he looked like. The company was later shortened to Taylors, and the company is still based in Harrogate to this day. Betty's family still owns a share, so has not been completely sidelined like you would imagine. Yorkshire Tea is now the second most purchased tea in the UK. The company even supplied tea bags free of charge to Britain's Women's Institute, but had to stop in 2011 due to the remarkable growth of the Women's Institute and longer life expectancy of its members, which just goes to show that you do pay the price for success. Yorkshire tea uses varieties of tea grown in the Assam region of India, Sri Lanka and Kenya, representing a melting pot of the greatest leaves from all over the world. The tea even boasts a remarkable celebrity fan club, including Russell Crowe, the cast of Friends and even Patrick Stewart. The brand's marketing department is incredible and has been credited with romanticising the popular image of the Yorkshire Dales, conjuring images in your mind of Sean Bean peacefully riding his bicycle through a sleepy Yorkshire village whilst the theme from TV's Heartbeat plays. Perhaps he's left the house to buy some Bisto and Wensleydale cheese from Knaresborough. So, now that I've explained to you the history of Yorkshire tea, let's prevaricate no further and delve into the packaging of the product. The box is square and has a nice red ribbon going up it, which boasts the mark of HRH, the Prince of Wales, which just goes to show that in a constitutional monarchy such as ours, the Prince of Wales has time to appraise tea and tell us if he approves it or not. So really, he should be doing my job when you think about it. The illustrations on the box are of an idealistic Yorkshire countryside, people playing cricket while a little lamb watches on. Oh, it's here. A little lamb watches on and it's staring at us as if to say, why on earth is somebody painting me? So, what's the verdict? Will it be so good it makes me want to scream with passion from the roof of the Orvik Centre? Or so awful, I will want to bury it in the Saddleworth Moors. I've only just now realised that the comment I just made could be misconstrued to be a reference to the Moors murders. And let me reassure you, that is definitely not the case. It's just the first place I could think to bury something. In Yorkshire. And before anybody points out that the Moors are actually in Greater Manchester, Yes, you are technically correct. However, they were historically in the West Riding of Yorkshire. So, there. Sorry if there was any misunderstanding before. Ah. Oh. Well, that was incredible. Breathtaking, in fact. What a cup of tea that was. It's like... Being French kissed by angels. Angels made of chocolate and caramel and Battenberg cake. 
And T, of course. It's like every sip I take massages my soul and dips my head in warm water. Not like a murder, more like a baptism. Yes, a nice baptism with a friendly priest. To surmise, I rate the mug of the week 8 out of 10. It would be 10 out of 10, but I think that the milk I used was a little bit on the cusp of being sour. I should make note of going to spa beforehand next time for fresh milk. It was one day past its sell-by date.